السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Respected chairperson of this session and my all other well distinguished personalities I am Haysam Hassan from India and doing research at Molana Azad National of the University, Hyderabad. On this happy and hilarious moment, blessed with an, uh, an eminent audience like you, it is my privilege to present a paper titled Revitalization of Islamic Civilization in the Writings of Sayyid Abul Hassan Ali and Nadvi and Ustad Badiw Zaman Said Nursi. First of all, I praise the Almighty Allah who gave me such a golden opportunity, Alhamdulillah. Dear brothers, in each and, each and every period of history, whenever Islamic civilization was on the verge of decline, Allah has sent some past Muslim thinkers and revivalists to defend it. Thus, Islam possesses a rich and long tradition of tajdid, renewal or re revitalization, and Islam uh, revival. Diagnosing the enlarging gap between the ideas of Islam and the realities of Muslim life, all these renewal, uh, all these renewal and revival thoughts focused upon a return to the fundamentals of Islam, that is, Islam, Quran and Sunnah. In other words, revitalization or revival can be said to be a transitory process from a degenerated social order to a newer one in accordance with the ideas of Islam. This process continues and will continue in a dialectic process of rise and fall and it is the implication of prophetic saying in Allah ya'athu li hadhihi al-ummah ala ra'si kulli mi'ati sanatin man yujaddidu laha dinaha verily Allah sends to this ummah at the head of every hundred years someone who will renew its deen Thus, the moments led by the likes of Omar bin Abdul Aziz, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ash-Shafi and Imam Al-Ghazali uh, at, uh, at different periods of Muslim history represent the popular responses towards the degradation of Muslims from the basic Islamic belief system. In modern times, especially after the decline of Ottoman Empire, this process of revitalization was reactivated in Muslim communities in different areas. Severely polluted by the intuition of Western materialistic civilization, Muslims were detaching themselves from the basic tenets of Islam. Islam's conformity with science and modernity was continuously questioned. But despite all the well-established anti-Islamic arguments, there emerged a number of past scholars who devoted their lives to revitalize the Islamic civilization and to combat the anti-ideological crusades. Thus, this paper aims at analyzing two of such distinguished personalities. One of them is Said Abul Hassan Ali and Nadvi from India, and the latter, Ustad Badiyu Saman Said Nursi from Turkey. First, I will focus upon Abul Hassan Nadvi and his works and his reforms. Born in 1913 at Raibarlari town of Uttar Pradesh in India, Alimian was popularly known as Alimi. Uh, Abul Hassan Ali and Nadvi was popularly known as Alimian. He was highly influenced and he was one of the greatest religious scholars India has ever produced. He was highly influenced by his father, Sayyid Abdul Hai Al Hassani, a celebrated biographer and historian as well as his, uh, his brother, his elder brother, Sayyid Abdul Ali al, al Hassani, He was also greatly attracted by the Tajdidi thoughts of Ash uh, Imam Rabbani, Shaykh Ahmad Sarhindi, Imam Shah Waliullah al Dahlavi, and Allama Iqbal. A gifted speaker and prolific writer, Nadiv has authored well over 50 books and, uh, run, and has written more than 100 scholarly papers in both Arabic and Urdu languages. His notable works on Islamic civilization are Mada Khasr al-Alam bin Hitat al-Muslim in text has been translated as Islam and the world, the rise and fall of Muslims and its effects on mankind. The other, the next, Asira uh, al-Fikrat al-Islamiyya wal-Fikrat al-Warbiyya fil-Aqtar al-Islamiyya. It is translated as 
uh, Western civilization, Islam and Muslims. The next, Asirah uh, Ubanil Imani Wal Madiya, Faith versus Materialism, the message of Surah Al Kaf. The last one is Rijal uh, Fikri Wal Dawati Fil Islam, which has been translated as the service of Islamic spirit. Also, Nadri has played a key role in founding many national and international organizations and institutions, including the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies, World Forum of Islamic Literature, Muslim World League, Academy of Islamic Research and Publications, Payama Insaniyat, it can be translated as Message of Humanity, and All India Muslim Personal Law Board. Now, I am moving the next uh, subtitle, Education as the Vehicle for Civilization, Civilizational Renewal. We know it is incontrovertible that education is the cornerstone of any civilization. As uh, Bill Durant says, education is the transmission of civilization. In the prophetic, in, in the prophetic viewpoint, education is spirit of Islam, al-ilm hayatul Islam. The edifice of Islamic civilization is built upon the very first Quranic word ikra, which means to read. Whenever the educational system is in danger, the civilization will decline, as the education is the primary agent of uh, socialization. Now, we saw a pressing need to prepare a fertile ground for right education in order to revitalize the Islamic civilization and to recapture all its lost glory and pride. Its educational program was meant to change the intellectual, political, and economic destiny of Muslim Ummah. With this goal in mind, that we prepared many study materials and designed the curriculum of many universities. He identified the greatest barrier for the advancement of Muslim Ummah as coming from the deterioration of the valid education system and hence emphasized the need uh, of revamping the education system of Muslims. He proposed that Quran and Hadith must be the primary and direct sources to acquire the expertise in religious sciences. He said that a good command of Arabic language and of international spoken languages is necessary to fulfill the duties of Islah and Dawah. While promoting the secular education, he urged the Muslim experts of these disciplines to make them compatible with Islamic principles. In his opinion, that the educational system shouldn't confine to teaching students the subject matter and making them mere depository of knowledge, but instead it shall be capable of inculcating the Islamic values and ethics in them. Thus, he was interlinking between ilm and iman, faith and education. To nullify the Ill, Ill effects of secular education in India, he set up, a, he set up Dini Thailimi Council, which can be translated as religious, uh, religious Education Council, which aimed at providing religious education to Muslim children through a chain of mosque schools. Now we can move to uh, Nadvi's method of Islamic revival. The necessary qualities of a revivalist can be listed as following. A diagnosis of the existing ailments in Ummah, identification of its hopes and the barriers in front of their hopes. B. Scheme for treatment of these ailments. C. Making of the patient once prepared mentally and physically for the treatment. All these qualities were found in the personality of Nadvi. He diagnosed the current ailment as the gradual extinction of the amber of Iman from the hearts of people. The weakness of Iman along with the weakness of Iman along with the strong inclination towards Western materialistic civilization has made them afraid of the death and the admirers of dunya, this world. Thus he gave his, his, all his breath and blood to fuel the smoldering ember of Iman and keep it a place in the hearts of people. This he saw was the only treatment for the decay of Islamic civilization. For him, Iman was the key to open any locked doors towards the court, the key used by Prophet Muhammad to unlock the minds of Arabs in Jahiliya and make them flag holders of the best civilization in the world. Let me opine that the renewal of Islamic civilization or Muslim Ummah can be achieved only by reforming its individuals or believers because they are the bricks of the edifice of Islam. The righteousness of individual can, comes from the purification of that part of his body which if it becomes good, the whole body becomes good and if it becomes bad, the whole, whole body becomes bad. And indeed it is 
the heart al qalb indeed allah did allah doesn't change the condition of his society unless its people change what is in their hearts or in their self as is mentioned in surah al raid verse number 11 said that we gave paramount importance to the following points and urge the scholars to follow them in the way of revitalization of islamic civilization first strengthening of iman faith in the wake of unprecedented attack by materialism Prioritizing revelation, wahi upon the reason, akal. Cementing the bond with, the, with Holy Quran and Sunnah, igniting the umber of soul, nice, reviving the spirit of jihad, uh, drawing inspiration from Islamic history and its stalwarts, rejecting the materialistic civilization and accepting the good aspects of Western advancement, identifying the role of Muslim Ummah in leading the world. A bringing of children in pure Islamic atmosphere, bringing fundamental changes to curriculum and educational system in Muslim countries, preparing intellectuals with sufficient amount of religious and secular education who can meet the needs and such challenges of modern age. With this, I conclude the part of part about uh, Sayyid Nadvi, and I am moving to Sayyid Nursi and the revitalization of Islamic civilization. Born in 1877 in eastern Anatolia of Turkey, he was popularly known as Badiou Zaman. Truly, uh, he was what his, ma what his name made it. Truly, he was a wonder of age. His lifetime witnessed the decline of Ottoman Empire and, was, and he was well aware of the intellectual and ethical challenges coming from rapid secularization and westernization in Turkey. He identified the, uh, identified the weakness of faith as the gravest threat to Islam and worked for renewing and strengthening of uh, faith through new methods and restatement of basic tenets of Islamic principles. The light he lit up remains uh, still ablaze through his followers, popularly known as No Movement. Known for his extraordinary wisdom and memory, he has learned more than 80 kitas in Islamic sciences by heart and was regarded as one of the leading religious scholars before the age of 18. Unlike some orthodox ulamas, he mastered almost all modern physical and mathematical sciences also. At a time, Quran and Islam were unprecedentedly attacked in the name of science and materialism, particularly the positive philosophy of Auguste Comte. His encyclopedic work on Quran, Risale Nur, was a new method of expounding the Quranic teachings on the truths of belief, incorporating the traditional religious sciences and modern secular sciences, and refuting the underpinnings of materialistic philosophy. He could leave behind him a school of thought for the revitalization of Islamic civilization and a movement which has become the resort of millions across the world. Now we can move to faith based education as a step stepping stone to civilization. Nursi identified ignorance, poverty and dissension as three common global enemies and saw so education as the most important way to combat these enemies. Unity cannot occur through, he states that unity cannot occur through ignorance. Unity is the fusion of ideas and the fusion of ideas occurs through this electric rise of knowledge. Nursi also interlinked, interlinked between Ilm and Iman. He says that the light of consciousness, the conscience is religious sciences, the light of the mind is civilized sciences, reconciliation of both manifests the truth. The students skill develop further with these two sciences. When they are separated from the former superstition and from the latter corruption and skepticism is born. The main purpose of his educational project uh, Madras Adul Zehra was the integration of uh, religious and secular sciences. He found that Islamic civilization could be revitalized and rejuvenated only through this integration. As Nursi's method of Islamic revival. He also identified the most serious element of modern man in his search for happiness to be the weakness of Iman, faith, and diagnose its root cause to be the tendency of distinguishing between religious and secular sciences as two never incompatible beings. In his famous uh, Damascus sermon, he said, 
I have realized that what has allowed foreigners to fly towards the future on progress while it arrested us and kept us in, res in respect of material, material development in the Middle Ages are six dead sicknesses. He, he counts these uh, six sicknesses as following hopelessness, death of truthfulness in social and political life, love of enmity, unawareness of the bond that bands believers together, this Buddhism restricting and restricting the all endeavors to what is personally beneficial. He also suggests the remedies from the pharmacy of Quran. They are hope, honesty, honesty, love, com uh, compassion, brotherhood, and mutual consultation. Revitalization of Islamic civilization could only be achieved by cultivating individual faith. For this, he emphasized an inward turn towards Islam and promoted a grassroots level educational approach for religious revival beginning at the individual level. He also, he also saw the process of cultivating faith at the individual level can be accomplished by replacing the faith through mass imitation, taqlidi iman, with faith uh, by individual enquiry, tahqiqi iman, through understanding of Quran and its interpretative writings such as Risal and Nur. A thorough understanding of Quran and in its inter interpretative writings such as Risalinur is an inevitable prerequisite for this purpose. He was of the opinion that society as a whole had not converted to positivism and materialism, but had rather been coerced by the positivist elite. His goal though, was to steer the people back towards the Quranic principles. Hagan Yaus, uh, Yaus argues that Nurse's ideas rest on three principal objectives. First, to raise the consciousness of Muslims. Second, to refute the dominant intellectual discourses of materialism and positivism. And third, to recover the collective memory by revising the shared uh, grammar of society. Now, concluding remarks. Ustad Said Nursi and Said Nadvi were two profound Muslim thinkers and revivalists of 20th century. Both gave their breath and blood to the cause of revitalizing Islamic civilization. Though they, they, though they lived in far distant countries, one can find striking similarities in their thoughts and methods. Firstly, uh, strengthening of faith at individual level. Both Nursi and Never be diagnosed the weakening of faith as the root cause of all problems of modern man and concentrated on the strengthening of Iman at individual level. Nadri metaphorically described the Iman as Miftah, the key to unlock all doors. Secondly, faith based education as the prime ingredient for revitalization. Both Nosi and Nadibi gave paramount importance to education system and reforming its outdated methods. Both of them flatly opposed the trend of regarding tradi traditional religious sciences and modern secular sciences as two incompatible ent entities, both interlinked between Iman and Ilm. Accepting all good ones and avoiding all bad ones tend towards westernization. Both Nelsi and Nadvi shared the concept of accepting all good ones and avoiding all bad ones in their approach towards modernity. They took a middle path between the stand of those imitating West blindly and of those rejecting everything Western or modern. Fourthly, optimistic uh, about the future of Islam. Both Nusi and Nadvi were optimistic about the future of Islamic civilization. Nusi said in his Damascus sermon, the future shall be Islam's and Islam's alone, and it shall be ruled by the roots of Quran and belief. Similarly, Nadvi shares the same feeling in his masterpiece, Islam and World. Fifthly, interfaith dialogue as a tool for peaceful coexistence. Both Nusi and uh, Nadvi uh, promoted interfaith dialogue as a mean to ensure healthy relations between Muslims and others and create, create a peaceful coexistence in a multicultural society. Lastly, they, both of them emphasized the role of Arabs. Both Nusi and Nadvi uh, emphasized the pivotal role to be uh, played by Arabs in the revitalization of Islamic civilization and at the same time opposed the pan-Arabism as the new form of tribalism in Jahiliya period. Nadvi has written many books addressing the leaders of and people of many Arab nations. Surely, Ustad Badiyu Zaman, Said Nursi, and Said Abdul, Abul Hassan Ali and Nadvi were two brilliant stars of 20th century which shone luminously in Turkey and India. 
There were two profound modern Muslim thinkers who could explore the reasons behind the decline of the Islamic civilization and suggest the best to, re to its rejuvenation. Both of them passed through the terrible and tumultuous times of Muslim history as the reason that, that is Islam was targeted by both skeptics and critics from each and every nooks and crannies of the world, identifying the gravest threat to the Islam as coming from the decay of its intellectual base. Both adopted short and long term measures to revitalize the Islamic civilization through their writings based on deep understanding of Quran and Hadith. Both Norsi and Nadvi asserted the knowledge, education and faith as the prime ingredients for the revitalization of Islamic civilization and called for individual level rejuvenation of Islamic consciousness in order to bring God back to everyday life. Both aimed at enabling Muslims to show their Quranic status of higher Ummah and, and to live in harmony through interfaith dialogues. They suggested proper adherence to Sharia and Quranic virtues of taqwa, sincerity, conversion, and love as the signpost of a true civilization. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Islam.